Stock Charts TV viewers, thanks so much for joining us on this Wednesday, June 15th, 2022, for a special presentation from Go No Go Charts. Alex Cole, my dear friend, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing very well, doing very well, and I'm looking forward to this one. It's going to be a, a fun one. We're going to get through some, some new information. Absolutely. And for those of you who have been paying attention to Go No Go Charts and watched several of the presentations that Alex and I have given uh, this year, some of this material is going to be a little familiar. We're going to walk through a little bit of the methodology and the concepts behind Go No Go Charts. But we're going to focus today on a brand new topic. We're going to talk about relative strength and how important that is uh, for your portfolio. Uh, but first, we're going to set the stage and talk a little bit about trend following. Uh, so grab a notebook, grab a beverage. Uh, the markets are closed. This should be uh, a much less emotional exercise than trading has been the last couple of days. And uh, here at midday on June 15th, while we're recording this, we're all on pins and needles awaiting uh, announcements from Federal uh, Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell and whether or not he's going to stick with Wall Street's estimates of a 75 basis point hike or perhaps uh, move a little more aggressively. We're going to cover that tomorrow on our Go No Go show, which is a great reminder. If you're watching this special, tune in every Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern for a fresh airing market review. We're going to walk through a ton of charts uh, and, and talk about what's happening uh, in the current markets. And that's uh, every Thursday afternoon. So without any further uh, delay, Alex, let's let's dive in and talk a little bit about trend following. Specifically, I want to uh, mention John Henry. Uh, this gentleman might be familiar to many of you if you've read the book or seen the movie Moneyball. Uh, he had a humble beginning on a soybean farm in southern Illinois where he learned the commodities trade. Now, he realized early on that all of the, the narratives and the emotions and the you know, expectation about what could be or should be uh, was really unhelpful to his investment practice. He then translated that to uh, a, a very uh, successful Boston Red Sox team winning many championships by taking the subjective bias out of player selection and just looking quantitatively at what is actually happening with players, what their skills and their statistics tell them. So for all of us, we've had those trades that then became investments. Uh, they were working against us and we just doubled down. We averaged in uh, as price kept moving lower. That's not what trend following investment is all about. And we're going to talk about how Go No Go charts can provide that solution. First, Professor Cole is going to talk to us about what a responsible technical analysis checklist might look like if you're trying to identify the beginning or the end of a trend. So Alex, let me hand it over to you. Yeah, so we'll roll through this really quickly. Um, it's a simple concept, but we always talk about how it's not easy. If you've seen this uh, section of a presentation we've done before, you'll know that we're so um, we're so captured by the fact that trend identification is probably the most important skill that we can learn. Because if you can identify the trend, you can make money on the majority of the move. So how do you do that? We're going to go through this quickly. You could use something like Donchian channels to identify higher highs and higher lows. That will tell you that a trend is in place. You could look at something like Bollinger Bands and see when the Bollinger Bands are narrow. If price breaks out in one direction, you could trade the direction of that break because you think now that a trend has started. Of course, you'll have a moving average on your chart if you're like everybody else uh, that uses any kind of charting. Uh, moving averages are everywhere. And if price is trading above its moving average, that's inherently bullish because it's telling us that price right now is higher than it has been in its previous history. You might throw volume on there and look for volume to confirm, volume being a derivative or a second piece of information, I should say, that can confirm what you're seeing in price action. And then if you throw an indicator on the bottom of the chart, something like MACD, you could look for a signal of when MACD is crossing over its other line, the signal line, or when both of them are crossing into positive territory. Again, a bullish situation. So if you look through this now, you've built this checklist of the, using the tools to identify trend. Somewhere here, right around where you see that cursor, you might be starting to feel confident that you're identifying a new trend in a bullish direction because you've got price making a new high as per Donchian, you've got it breaking out of narrow bands. It's above its moving average. Volume is higher than it has been. And then MACD and its signal are above zero. So you can feel fairly comfortable now recommending to clients or taking a position yourself that uh, we're starting to see enough bullish activity 
to establish a new trend. The problem is this chart is quickly becoming complicated. And we've all seen uh, examples of charts. We've all built charts that get really hard to see. The more concepts or more trend identification principles you try to look at on your price panel, and the more indicators you add below, the harder it gets to see price. And of course, we really know how important it is to keep price at the forefront when we're looking at these charts. And we know that many indicators are often redundant. Uh, people have three, four, five moving averages on their chart. Uh, there's diminishing returns the more indicators that you add. Oftentimes, they can even be contradictory. And so when you think about the emotional aspects of managing your money or managing client money, then the ability to make a trade decision, if you're going through this checklist and you've got more and more pieces that you're looking for, you're delaying your entries and delaying your exits, making it harder for you to stick to your rules, follow your discipline, and cut those losers short while letting your winners run, right? It, it, it adds complexity, it adds analysis paralysis. So the solution to this problem, Alex, talk to us a little bit about go, no, go trend. Yep. So the whole idea um, for all of these charts that you're going to see today is to take some of the most robust, um, most tested and most used ideas in technical analysis that I've found have been helpful for myself and for clients over the last 15 years now and blend them into something that will give me a complete understanding of the technical analysis of any asset over any time frame, but keep it simple so that I can see what's happening in terms of price action. And that's the go, no, go charts. And this is the real first piece of the puzzle, the go, no, go trend. And it blends all of that together to create a color coded bar that tells you what the trend is. Now, what's fascinating to me is that there is a lot more information, a ton of additional computation happening behind the scenes in this chart than even that simple process that Alex just walked us through. We want all of the information that technical analysis can give us about what the market is telling us in terms of trend. We do not want all of the noise. So we want to separate that signal from the noise, making it easier for you to follow your trading rules. Now, in, in its very simplest form, when a trend is in a go trend, these blue and aqua colors, we want to own that. We want to be long. When it's in a no-go trend, pink and purple bars, we do not want to be long. Uh, and in fact, if you play to the short side, those trends work in both directions. Now, Alex and I are really proud of this work. So proud of it that we're just giving it away for free. Uh, so for many of you who are tuned in today, you've already downloaded that free starter pack. It's an ACP plugin on stock charts. Uh, if you haven't yet, go check it out. Put that on your charts. And all we would ask is that you just let us know how it's going. Send us some feedback. Info at gonogocharts.com. What are you trading? How has it changed your discipline? Uh, what time frame are you looking at? Uh, we really want to hear from our users how that go no go trend is impacting your trading. Uh, and you can check that out right as, uh, as you add ACP plugins to your charts. Now, why is it so important to keep our focus on price? Well, after all, only price pays. And the more indicators, the more panels we add, we lose sight of the classical technical analysis. Price action is critically important to understanding areas of support and resistance, classical patterns. Uh, and Mark Abraham really says this uh, incredibly well when we're thinking about the supply and demand of investor behavior. He says, ultimately, it's the dollar weighted collective opinion of all market participants that determines whether a stock goes up or down. And that consensus is revealed by analyzing price. Now, we're firm believers. I've spent a decade with the CMT Association, Alex, more than 16 years at, at Bloomberg and other companies. We believe that the best fundamental analyst in the market is the market itself. All of that information about those companies that you're uh, holding shares of is revealed in price. And so we want to keep our eye very focused on that price action. So, Alex, just a quick review. What do those colors mean? So when you're looking at a go, no, go chart, bright blue means it's the strongest bullish environment. Aqua means that it's a weaker bullish environment. Pink is the first of the bearish colors. So that's a weak bearish environment. And purple is the strongest bearish environment. And in between, we have amber, which is our neutral uh, bars. Now, often you see amber in transition periods between trends before reversals. Sometimes you see amber creep in to a trend, but then the trend continue. 
So those are our five colors, and that will tell you, give you a sense of, of the trend. And then as we look at the chart here, this is the S&P on a daily chart using the spider, of course. And we can see that we are in a strong no-go trend. Um, these charts from Monday, you saw that gap down and the trend rolling over, continuing to be a no-go. Now, in the middle of the chart, we saw a go. But this just highlights how you should use disciplined investing. We saw a go. The go couldn't hold. We saw some amber bars uh, as it tried to maintain the go trend right there in the middle. And then the no-go took hold again. So you could have been trying to be long if that was your market bias. Uh, but given what we'll see on the next slide, perhaps that shouldn't have been uh, your market bias. But you're told fairly quickly that the trend has changed here and we're in a no-go again. Quick point to add, if, you, if you're looking at very long time frames, so a weekly, even a daily bar, you will see colors fluctuate throughout the day as the data changes. However, once that time period ends, the bars are never, or uh, candles, if that's your choice, uh, never restated or never edited. Uh, so it can fluctuate during the time period, depending on what the market is doing, uh, but it locks in at the end of the day or the week or the month uh, that you're looking at. So we know that any technical indicator worth its salt is going to work across multiple time frames, right? We know that markets are fractal uh, from our good friend, Charles Dow, over 130 years ago as he was uh, starting the Wall Street Journal and uh, assembling the, uh, the indices, the Dow Jones averages. He talked about how markets move in multiple time frames. Now, an accomplished sailor, a nautical gentleman, uh, he used the metaphor that the primary trend was like the tides of the ocean, unflappable. And here we're talking about very long time periods where it's the gross domestic product of the country, the expansion or contraction of the economy and the fundamentals of the underlying uh, companies that are driving that primary trend. So we want to pay attention to what is the bias of the market. That secondary period is the reaction to that unflappable information. He talked about that being the waves of the ocean. So that secondary time period is where a lot of technical analysts have uh, made fortunes and, and uh, really found their sweet spot because markets tend to mean revert above and below that primary trend. And then the minor period or that tertiary period is the uh, what he called the ripples on the surface of the ocean. That might be your time period. If you are trading intraday, very short term charts, God bless you. And you want to be aware of what the larger time frames are telling you in terms of the overall market bias. So going to go charts, like any uh, technical indicator worth its salt, is going to work the exact same way across multiple time frames. Alex, what do you see on a weekly chart of the S&P 500? Yeah, so this is the weekly chart. And I was alluding to that on the slide before, that the weekly chart is also in a strong no-go and has been for a few months. So that might alter the way you position yourself on the shorter time frame. So if we were looking at that daily chart before, uh, that attempt to go to go trend in the middle might have been taken with a grain of salt because we know that the larger market bias is a no-go. Um, so we're looking for trend continuation really on the shorter time frame in the direction of the larger time frame. And now if you step down in time frames, you've got your overall market bias from the weekly, your the the market uh, the time that you might operate in the daily, and then you might step down to an intraday chart to try to um, get really good entry in the direction of the trend that you're seeing. So for example, this is a 60 minute chart, and we know that the trend on a daily is a no-go. We know that it's a no-go on a weekly. So we could be looking at 60 minute charts to find fresh opportunities to participate in the trend, uh, which of course is the no-go. So we can see a few days ago, a, no, a new no-go on the hourly chart, um, which lines up then with the larger time frame no-go trends and could have been uh, a, nice, a nice trade for you to make. Now, remember, as Tyler said, your time frames may be different. If you're looking to trade, let's say, a uh, intraday charts, you may be looking at the daily as your overall bias, an hourly as your medium time frame, and then down to like a 10 or a 15 minute to get those entries. So that's the idea of using multiple time frame analysis. And of course, very personal to the time horizons in which you operate. Absolutely. Now we know that you're not all just equity investors, and maybe you're long short, but you might uh, invest across asset classes. Alex and I are students of, uh, of some of the legends like John Murphy, who wrote Intermarket Analysis many years ago, and then folks like Marcos Katsanos, who've built upon uh, Murphy's earlier work to help quantify some of the cross-asset relationships and where they have influence. 
regardless of whether you are an equity only investor, there is a ton of information to be found across other asset classes. Uh, so Alex is going to look at just the daily go, no go trend charts of multiple asset classes uh, just to kind of get a flavor for where the markets are at. Yeah, and, and you can build a, a graphic like this within the platform where you have a multi layout and you can look at a multi asset class uh, overview really of using go no go trend. And what's really interesting to me here is that um, there's a trend somewhere. There's a trend happening somewhere when you're looking at equities and you're really feeling the pain of the, the domestic U.S. markets going down. You're looking at treasuries and those treasury bond prices are going down. Bitcoin, you've got your you've got some money in cryptocurrencies that's been going down. Gold, your traditional flight to safety has been going down and that hasn't really done you any favors either. But then if you had been looking around the markets and been long oil and the dollar since the beginning of the year, then those were the trends that would have been uh, would have made sense to be long. And so you can quickly get a sense of what's happening around the major asset classes by getting a view of trend without using complicated charts. So if you're a subscriber to Go No Go Research or you've been watching that weekly Stock Charts TV show on Thursdays at 3.30, you've seen us pull up these maps. So let me walk you through this really quickly. We're removing the price action uh, just to get a clearer picture of the trends across asset classes. So this is a weekly chart. And here on the top panel, we're looking at equities. We're looking at bond prices in our second panel. We're looking at the commodity space in our third panel, US Commodities Index. Looking at the US dollar, uh, and a potential currency trade, and then looking at Bitcoin. And what really jumps out is that you can easily see those trend changes that began in 2022 as treasury bond prices started to sell off, yields and rates rising, uh, obviously causing some headwinds uh, for the U.S. equity market. That's probably the understatement of the year, uh, as well as uh, even riskier assets like the cryptocurrency markets. Now, for our enterprise clients, for institutional money managers, we use these maps to do some custom portfolio review, some work. If that's you, you can send us an email, info at gonogocharts.com, and we can uh, have a conversation about that. But for those of you who are watching the Stock Charts TV show every week, when we pull up these maps, that's what we're doing. We're comparing across asset classes, looking just at the trend of each of those constituents to get a quick glance for what the, the nature and color of the markets are. All right, Alex, we're going to switch gears here. We're going to dive into the concept of relative strength. And who better than veteran stock charts contributor, author, and world-renowned world technical analyst, Martin Pring, to help give us that definition. Pring says that relative strength is a technical concept that measures the relationship between two securities. One security is divided by the other. And relative strength can be used to better understand any intermarket relationships. Now, let's, let's go through a couple of examples to just show how this works. Obviously, for those of you who follow the work of uh, Julius de Kempener and other fantastic analysts here on Stock Charts, uh, this concept has been taken to many, many new levels. Uh, but we're going to start with the basics. Let's just say we're, we wanted to compare growth versus value stocks, right? As we went through the pandemic crash in 2020, uh, the COVID collapse, as it were, and the rally out, uh, we might be able to just eyeball the fact that more recently, growth equities have been in a downtrend. Uh, well, value equities have been kind of range bound. Okay, so that's good. We can compare multi-chart layout. We can kind of see, but they were both going down in 2020 and they both went up through 2021. Uh, how, how can we get a little better view? If we're looking at the relative strength ratio, growth equities divided by value equities, we can see those areas of outperformance and underperformance by growth equities, right? So strong rally out of the uh, uh, COVID collapse. In fact, growth equities began to outperform value leading into the collapse. As, uh, as we got into the spring of 2021, uh, we saw that uh, relationship reverse where value began to outperform growth, that cyclical rotation obviously driven uh, largely by interest rate hikes. Uh, and then we saw growth outperform value again through the end of 2021. And here is our year 2022 so far. So for those of you who are still holding the ARK ETFs and not transferring money into cyclical sectors like industrials, materials, energy, uh, uh, you've really missed out on a lot of those trends. So we want to evaluate our toolkit, make sure that our process meets with a changing regime in the marketplace. 
so let's let's keep moving, Alex. And I think, and yeah, what and I think just to just to quickly comment on that, it's very very important to to understand that that outperformance came before the pandemic crash, like you mentioned just a few minutes again uh, ago, because it looks like they both got killed, but being down less than the market is a really positive experience. Um, and, and if you can be positioned in a security or in an asset or in a sector that is outperforming, even though it's going down, don't, don't forget, it might still be giving you a positive alpha by underperforming less uh, than the benchmark. The really yeah, a lot of our institutional fund managers uh, that use go no go charts, uh, beating their benchmark is the is the stat that they are looking for every year. So if the market's down 30 and they're down three, they're a hero for their clients in protecting that capital. So relative strength is the core concept that we're talking about today. And if we think about the trend of that relative strength ratio, that line that was in the bottom, Alex, talk to us about how we can use go no go trend to uh, to compare that relative strength ratio. Absolutely. So if you imagine that relative strength line that we saw on the previous chart, what we're then doing is taking all of the blended inputs that go into go no go trend and applying it to the ratio itself. So we can get a sense of trend on the ratio. And what we're looking at here now is that growth versus value, but this time on a daily uh, with daily bars. And we can see how predominantly we have seen a strong no go um, for growth versus value. And that's exactly what we've seen. We've we've seen that since the beginning of the year that value has uh, come back into some kind of strength relative to growth. Absolutely. So we care a lot about relative and absolute trends. And so right now when we're comparing where we might want to be invested, we want to make sure that we're fishing where the fish are, so to speak. So obviously uh, value stocks outperforming growth as this ratio is heading downwards. Uh, let's take a look at another example, Alex. Yeah, this is utilities versus technology. Uh, again, um, taking advantage of that rotation that we're seeing away from growth and into value or defensive, more defensive plays uh, that we've been seeing and what people have been talking about this year. Uh, utilities now are the top of the ratio, technology, the bottom of the ratio in this chart. And you can see that outperformance on a relative basis of utilities starting earlier this year. Now, this one is a weekly chart. So from about, I think, end of February into March, we saw that rate, that relationship change. We saw the trend line, if you imagine, because there's nothing else on the chart, you can imagine a trend line uh, being drawn on this chart, downward sloping trend line. You could imagine that being broken as go, no, go trend changed colors. And so you can see the go trend uh, happening a few months ago in terms of utilities now being in a go trend relative to technology. So that allows you then to look for opportunities, like you say, to fish where the fish are, to look for opportunities that make sense given each sector's performance. And uh, for those of you who watch David Keller's show, The Final Bar, uh, he's famed for commenting on, yeah, it's not exactly the most interesting uh, thing to share at a cocktail party, which utilities company you've been investing in. Uh, obviously, the, the story behind a lot of growth equities and technology names uh, is much more exciting. But we're not here to uh, entertain our friends. We're here to manage our capital responsibly. Go no go charts can be used on these ratios. We we saw that trend begin to turn up on a relative basis, and then that outperformance of utilities to technology just signaling to us how defensive the markets had become. Alex, let's do another one: energy versus the S and P benchmark. So this is the XLE over the SPY. Right. So, you know, here we are. We're talking about energy <laughs> um, really since day one of 2022. We sort of flipped a switch and energy started to outperform. And this is the daily go no go trend on that ratio of energy to the SPY. And you can see how it came out of that no go correction, gave us a go flag and has been an outperformer on a relative basis ever since. So this ratio from between energy and stocks has been in a go trend um, uninterrupted for uh, the entire year. So that's what has allowed us when talking with clients and when putting out research to be looking for opportunities within that space. You'll see the same names come up, uh, Marathon Oil, Valero Energy, ExxonMobil. These are the companies that are coming across 
our screens because of the rotation we saw into energy stocks. And that could be seen by this relative trend displayed on the ratio here. Now, we recognize everybody is uh, extremely busy. Uh, pandemic has not been easy for any of us. So going through each sector or you know, hundreds and thousands of securities relative to the benchmark, uh, that's not an exercise that a lot of us have time to do. So what I'm pulling up on screen right now is a go, no, go rel map. Each of the sectors of the S&P 500 against the uh, benchmark index, the SPY. And so just from the top down, we can see technology sector, discretionary, communications, we're into energy, then financials, industrials, uh, materials, healthcare, staples, utilities, and real estate. And what I want to show when we're talking about relative strength and looking for where our investable opportunities are, this is a, a daily chart showing us most of the year, starting from February, our growth equity sectors, these top three panels, Nothing, nothing doing, right? A few blips into go trends relative to the S&P, but largely underperformed the entire year. Whereas something like the energy sector has been in an uninterrupted go trend relative to the S&P 500. Um, so when we look at these rel maps during our, our weekly go no go show, Thursdays at 3.30, or in go no go research that many of you subscribe to, this is what we're trying to do is understand the landscape, what's under the hood of the S&P, uh, look into the index and find out what sectors are leading and lagging. Now, congratulations, everybody. You've made it to the 50-yard line. Uh, we, we have a lot more to share with you today. Uh, but what we're going to do now is switch gears and talk about the complete set of tools from Go no Go Charts. So if nothing else, by all means, after this presentation, go to your Stock Charts account, go to those ACP plugins, make sure that you've added the Go no Go free starter pack. Uh, just so that you can take a look at those trends, remove some of the analysis paralysis, simplify your charting, and hopefully make uh, better informed trading decisions uh, and, and have a rules-based approach. All right, Alex, here we are, second half. Let's, uh, let's dive into the complete solution. Now, we've just talked about the trend, that's the top panel, but we know that in the complete technical picture, we want more than just trend, we also want to understand momentum, volume, and volatility. And all of that is taking place in one panel below the price panel uh, that's going to show us a ton of information that coincides with what we're seeing from trend. So the go -no go oscillator, the go -no go squeeze, and the go -no go icons are what we're going to talk about next. Uh, those are also available on Stock Charts ACP as a plugin. Uh, certainly after this presentation, I hope many of you go and check that out. Uh, and there's a lot more information to be had on our website as well, go -no -go so Alex, talk yep. to us real quick about the momentum concept. Yeah, and as we go through the rest of this, we're going to continue to talk about relative strength, but apply that complete suite of tools so we get a, you know, a trend, momentum, volatility, volume, all into the relative strength that we're seeing and how uh, you know fund managers have been able to beat the benchmark so far this year. But momentum, in the same way, when we look at important ideas, concepts, indicators they can crowd our charts. So if you imagine you're looking at uh, the trend identification process that we looked at quickly at the beginning, and now we're adding momentum concepts to that chart, uh, you could imagine that you're doubling up what you see here with what we had before. But they give valuable information. I am such a firm uh, believer in the value that comes from momentum indicators. They can tell us so much about the strength of the trend. And so we want to incorporate that information as well without overcomplicating the chart. So what we did was we created the Gonna Go Oscillator, which, like the trend, is a blend of some of the most valuable, as far as I found, most robust, most tested concepts in momentum analysis into one oscillator that gives us all the information we need. And if we think about it from a traditional sense, you can still use it just like you would use any oscillator. Imagine you're using RSI or stochastics, any one of these momentum oscillators. You can look for extremes of overbought and oversold. Uh, when the oscillator peaks or troughs, you can see how that lines up with uh, peaks and troughs in the price action. You can also look for momentum divergence. Um, divergence is such a massively important concept in technical analysis, and you want to get confirmation from whatever momentum indicator you're using 
on your chart. If price is making a higher high, as it did slightly in the first example here on the chart, you want to see your oscillator making another high or a similar high to what it did before, but it doesn't here. It makes a lower high, and that's an example of bearish divergence with price. And then the second example is lower, high, lower lows in price, but higher lows in the oscillator. So as price falls to that new low, there isn't as much momentum behind that movement lower. And so you can say that in this case, it's bullish divergence from price. Um, and then the last thing to point out that in this oscillator, we, of course, include volume. Volume is very important. Going back to Charles Dow again, it was the first extra piece of information. It's that first confirmatory idea that we will look at. You want to get a sense of volume when you see something important happen with price. If price races off to a new high, is volume heavy? Is the market participating in the move that you see in price or is it not? So we wanted to incorporate that as well um, without adding another indicator. So when the oscillator goes to dark blue, we know that volume is heavier uh, than it has been in its recent past. So the oscillator changing color gives us a sense of market participation in the form of volume. Absolutely. Now, what's uh, what was really powerful to me the first time Alex started showing me these tools was not just the way that the go -no go oscillator can work in the traditional momentum sense, but also the objective zero line. Now, we talked about divergence. We talked about areas of overbought and oversold, but the zero line is really a key concept for using go -no go charts. Alex, talk to us a little bit about, uh, I know you've read <laughs> all of the work of folks like Connie Brown and many others who talked about how you can use momentum oscillators in trend, very different from the way Wells Wilder originally intended in the range bound markets of the 1970s. Um, talk to us about what this zero line means to you. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I was fascinated by that work, like you just mentioned. And the idea being that um, when a trend is in place, does that render momentum analysis useless? And a lot of people have thought uh, and done the research to show that it doesn't. But what you do have to do is adjust the way you look at that information. And what we found is that when a trend is in place and healthy, oscillators will range between certain levels. They won't go from their extremes of overbought to oversold if a trend is healthy. So again, thinking about RSI, probably the most used oscillator. If you're in an uptrend, RSI will go overbought. And that makes all the sense in the world if you think about it, because you're saying the trend is up. So that should lead to some enthusiasm, some excessive buying. So that'll take the oscillator to overbought, but do you want to sell based on a sell signal of RSI if the trend is really, really strong? No, we know we get a lot of false sell signals in uptrends on momentum oscillators. But what we also know is that it won't go oversold because that doesn't make sense if you really take a moment to think about it. Excessive selling shouldn't happen in a strong uptrend. So what you do find is the oscillator goes overbought, comes back to neutral, goes overbought, comes back to neutral. Now, really quickly, the problem we have with this is finding those ranges is a subjective thing. It can be different for securities, different for markets. And so you're often then asking yourself, if I assume that the RSI should range from 80 to 40 in an uptrend, what happens if it goes to 42? Does that count as a touch of support? What happens if it goes to 38 or 39? Does that count as a break of support? It's very subjective. And you're often moving those levels as, as uh, time goes by. So what we wanted to do with Go No Go Oscillator is create it in a way so that when all of the inputs, the blended momentum inputs, go to their respective neutral territories, the oscillator falls to the zero line or rises to the zero line. We get a zero value when everything that goes into that oscillator is in neutral territory. And what then happens is that we get an objective level that can be used as support and resistance when in trends. Now, over a decade ago, when I first started working for the CMT Association, equipped with an MBA in corporate finance and no clue about technical analysis, uh, Ralph Akampura took the time to, uh, to try to teach me a few things, including momentum. And the analogy he used was, uh, you know, if you had a baseball in your hand and you threw that up in the air, the speed at which it leaves your glove or leaves your hand, that's the fastest it's going to move. And as it reaches the apex, it's going to slow down and then it's going to come back down to your glove. 
Now, building on Ralph's metaphor, of course, it's baseball. He's from the Bronx. <laughs> baseball is for everything. Uh, as it comes back down to your glove, think about that zero line telling us whether the trend is still in play. Is the game still in play? Did you catch the ball in your glove? And then you can throw it back up again. Catch it in your glove, throw it back up. Oversold momentum in a trend. That's a, that's a serious threat uh, to the game continuing or for that trend to continue because if you don't catch it and it falls to the floor and you have negative oversold momentum, uh, that's a real threat to the trend. So at each point in this trend, when the momentum oscillator comes down to this and tests the zero line, finds support at zero and takes off again, we see that resurgence of momentum in the direction of the trend. Uh, that's what helps investors understand those buy the dip moments. That's how we can get outsized winners we can stick with that trade. And to help make that process even easier, we use some data visualization tools called the go, no go icons. So there's just two that you need to worry about, two to think about here. Trend continuation, what I was just talking about. The baseball came back to the glove, you can throw it again, the game continues. That's gonna be these green circles on the chart uh, that tell us when momentum has resurged in the direction of the underlying trend. That's where we want to size up the position. If we're pyramiding into our positions or if we haven't entered the trend yet, if we are late to uh, the trade, that's a great point of entry in an already existing trend. The other arrows here, these red arrows, tell us a counter trend correction. And that's the more classical use of the going to go oscillator or any momentum oscillator that retreats from its overbought level. So this might tell us a, a, a near term high. Now, if you've got uh, other uses uh, for your funds, you have to exit a position, not because of a stop, but you need to exit. That's a great point for an, an intermediate high uh, to uh, to take some profits off the table. Now, Alex, let's let's move on to the last piece of the puzzle. Uh, when we're talking about volatility, you built the go no go squeeze. Yeah, and just to jump in there really quickly on those icons, we want to remind everybody that the opposite will be true in a no-go trend. So we're seeing on this chart a go trend, so green circles for go trend continuation. If we were in a no-go trend and we were getting the oscillator hitting re resistance, getting rejected by the zero line from below, then we'd be getting red no-go trend continuation circles. And likewise, those arrows in a no-go trend would be green telling us that we might see a counter trend rally or consolidation against the no-go trend. So just to remind everybody that in the other trend, the yep. tools work the same way, um, but flip your colors. And we've uh, got a lot of examples of no-go trends for you all. I'm sure moment, you have many examples moment, yourself absolutely. from current markets. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So the last piece here, when I, when I needed to give a complete overview of any asset using technical analysis, the last piece that I wanted to make sure that I felt comfortable talking about from my one chart was volatility. So if you are familiar with technical analysis, if you're familiar with some of these concepts, you will likely have heard about things like Bollinger Band squeezes, Keltner Band squeezes. These volatility squeezes are very, very important and offer us valuable information. And I've always been told, or I remember being taught that it was like squeezing a tube of toothpaste. Eventually the cap blows off and of course, it's a mess. But what we're looking for is that reduced volatility. And when that cap blows off, then you it might lead to significant moves in the direction of that, um, that increased volatility. So we know the importance of the zero line. We know that it should hold when in an uptrend or hold as resistance when in a downtrend. So we look for situations where that uh, oscillator rides the zero line, telling us that we've had directionless momentum. We've had all those inputs in neutral territory for an extended period of time. And the way we can visualize that with go-no-go -no -go charts is that we watch for that climbing grid of the go-no-go -no -go squeeze, that amber climbing grid that reaches its max and then stays there for every bar that the oscillator remains at the zero line. And so that really allows us to search or look for situations where we could expect a break. And what I really love about technical analysis is that it is simply the visualization of investor behavior. That's what we're doing. We're taking price data out of the markets and we're seeing it in a picture that really describes what's happening. So 
with a volatility squeeze, that knife fight or that tug of war between buyers and sellers. You can see in the trend, we've, we've been off to the races and we're consolidating those gains. The, the price range per bar has, has shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. Uh, doesn't mean that we don't have a lot of trading going on, but there's no clear decision point, uh, bulls or bears. We don't know who's going to be in control next. The break of the max go, no, go squeeze to the upside, right? Buyers have control, momentum moves to the upside, and off we go again on that trend. We're going to look at a few examples where, uh, where that's not the case, where sometimes we see a reversal of trend following a squeeze. Either way, we're highlighting that area of compressed volatility because we know that the velocity of the move upon the break uh, could be significant. Alex, this is my favorite part of every presentation. We get to walk through some live examples and just show how simple it is to use go, -No -Go charts. There's only three things to give you a complete technical view of any security on any time frame. We wanna look at the trend, we wanna look at the oscillator, and if there's anything important happening at the zero line. So you could do this with us together. Uh, don't worry, this is an online webinar. You can shout them out in your home, let your dog know that you're paying attention. <laughs> Alex, let's talk about the macro view first, starting with the TNX, the, uh, the, the yields, the rates. Yeah, well, we wanted to throw some charts in here now that would perhaps have an impact on the rotation and the relative strength ideas that we were seeing throughout the year so far. And what are some of the, the things that can really affect uh, stock prices or can affect which areas of the markets thrive and which struggle. Well, it's things like rising rates, right? We've been in a rising rate environment and the, the question on everybody's minds is, will it continue? Can it continue? Obviously, the Fed are coming out with um, a decision later today that we're all going to probably talk about uh, tomorrow. But looking at the chart itself and just the technical analysis, we can get a sense of what's happening with rates. Where's the trend? Uh, throw your hand up if you think it's a strong go. <laughs> um, hey, look at that. All the hands went up. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. I think it's a strong go. We're seeing bright blue bars. Um, where's the oscillator? Well, right now, the oscillator is at six overbought. Now, you can argue back and forth what that means, but we just talked about how in a strong trend, an oscillator will go overbought and come back. There's a lot of people making a living buying strength, buying overbought situations mm -hmm. uh, using momentum analysis. But what's happened recently? Well, recently the oscillator um, dipped below zero as the trend corrected. And we even saw some amber trend bars, some uh, go fish bars there. Remember, if you've seen us before, go fish, time to go long, time to go short, time to go fishing, that fantastic Jesse Livermore quote. And those are our amber bars of neutrality. We saw them creep in there, but then it went back to go. And then confirming that resurgence of the go trend, oscillator racing back in to positive territory. So can uh, rates go higher? Will rates go higher? Rates are going higher at the moment and are in a strong go trend. What about on a long-term chart? If you've been reading our research over the past uh, weeks and months or watching our show, you probably will have seen this chart. Look at that trend line. Um, and that's one of the things we love about, obviously, go no go charts is that we can draw traditional analysis because it's just one price panel. But that downward sloping trend line is decades long. I think this is about a 30-year chart. And you can see that no-go in, in rates for 25-plus years as we've been in this historically low-rate environment. If you haven't been buying houses, you should have been. <laughs> uh, I, but, I think mom and dad welcomed baby Tyler into the world right about here and bought a new house at like a 16% mortgage. <laughs> yeah, I think my dad tells me of an 18% rate on, on his first house. Um, but we've been looking at this. This year's rising rate environment has been very fast, and it took us quickly back up to that downward sloping trend line. And what we're looking at here is quarterly bars. And right now, as price stands, the quarterly bar for TNX for rates is above that trend line and is a go. Um, and what we're looking at is a go, a new go trend and the oscillator breaking above the zero line. So, of course, we don't predict anything. Something could happen. Rates could go back lower. But this is quite a significant moment. The daily chart showed we're in a strong go. Uh, and now even the quarterly chart in a go above its trend line. Absolutely powerful uh, regime shift here in the United States uh, and what we're seeing around the world as well for uh, 
for rising interest rates. And uh, obviously, the, the Fed's uh, hike decision is to combat that runaway inflation. Uh, we, we may have a lot further to go. As Alex mentioned, we don't predict. We react responsibly to what the market is telling us. And so you pick your time frame and you pick your risk tolerance. But right now, the evidence that we're seeing on a quarterly basis, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis is that uh, rates are headed higher. Let's talk about the U.S. dollar, Alex. Uh, complete the macro picture of headwinds for uh, for growth equities and uh, and emerging markets around the world. What are you seeing on this chart of the dollar index fund UUP? Yeah, the dollar's been been um, a fantastic. Uh, a fantastic asset to watch this year. It's confounded so many people. I mean, we've we've talked to a lot of people that have just been waiting for the dollar to roll over, um, and it really hasn't. You know, this is that's I think just about the beginning of the year there where we saw the go trend, and it has just uh, exploded higher. And every time we saw the dollar correct, people would talk about, well, this is it. Perhaps it'll roll over. Uh, we saw those go trend continuation icons throughout the move telling us no. Uh, if you're looking at a go, no go chart, we caught the ball uh, and we, we don't see the dollar rolling over anyway, not yet. Um, right now, what's the trend? Strong go, oscillator at four. And what's interesting about the zero line? Well, we've just found support again on heavy volume. So that green circle that you saw there at the beginning of the week, I think that was Monday showing that there is trend continuation signs when looking at the dollar. So what will that mean in terms of the rotation we've seen and the relative strength that we've seen so far this year with uh, growth underperforming and the value sectors doing well? We've now looked at rates and we've looked at the dollar and those will have an impact on whether those um, rotations or whether those uh, themes stay in play. Now, of course, Alex and I spend a ton of time with sell side research analysts from the major banks that you know, love and hate, uh, as well as fund managers from all sorts of uh, long, short equity, mutual funds, RIAs, uh, folks who have discretionary uh, tools around managing client funds. One of the things that we developed uh, years ago was go no go research. We know how busy these folks are, and we know that responsible technical analysis is going to take us from a top down perspective. We have to understand the landscape longer time uh, horizons. We have to look from the asset class to the sector groups before we get to individual securities. And to do that, uh, we publish twice a week. Uh, weekly research is available at gonogocharts.com. Uh, for any of you who aren't subscribed yet, by all means, go check that out. But what we do is every Monday morning deliver something called Flight Path. And that takes that top-down perspective. We give a full-length explanation of where we are seeing trends across asset classes, sector groups, and then into individual securities so that we can understand those macro influences, those intermarket relationships. Then on Saturdays, we send out what's called launch conditions. Now, the, the terminology go or no go, we borrowed that from NASA uh, and other military agencies where you want to make sure that the conditions are in your favor before you uh, launch a rocket into space, for example. That's a very expensive endeavor. Risking capital in the markets is no less important. So we want to make sure that probabilities are on our side. And every Saturday morning, we know that the best practice, the, the, the folks who have been doing this longest, they step away from trading, they step away from the markets with a clear mind, and they look through trends across asset classes on longer time horizons. Uh, so we send out a global chart pack for all of our subscribers every Saturday morning uh, just to you know, inculcate you with the go-no-go -go trend and make sure that you've got perspective on what the markets are telling you away from, separated from your emotions during the trading week. Um, so... We know that, uh, that that research helps people put Alex and I uh, over your shoulder uh, week by week, help explain the tools and show you what we are seeing uh, from research. Uh, early on this year, January 10th, we were talking about that rotation into cyclical sectors, the outperformance of value to growth, uh, and some of what we were seeing in terms of leadership rotation on both a relative strength, relative and absolute basis. And that's what's really driven a lot of our analysis through uh, this first half of 2022. So we invite you to, to check that out. In addition to the weekly research, we offer premium research for those who are more active traders who are looking for daily ideas of trend continuation and perhaps reversal. Uh, Alex is putting those out that identify really favorable go-no-go -go setups on individual securities. That's premium research that goes direct to uh, subscribers' inboxes every day. 
Now, uh, what we know from uh, doing these presentations is that it's really good to show live examples and not just cherry pick uh, what we saw uh, this morning before the presentation. So right out of research, uh, Kutera on June 7th, this is a very recent idea. It's a medical equipment company. Uh, we saw the trend continuation to the no-go. Alex, what have we seen just this week for Kutera? Yeah, just to, and this was another one just to show how it works in the other direction or how you can use the... Um understanding of, of technical analysis in both directions. So there had been a strong move up in, in Kutera and then it turned to a no-go after that sort of uh, mostly sideways uh, correction uh, earlier a few months ago. And it's in a no-go trend. And this is to your point, a lot of times people see a chart and think, oh, I've missed it or I've missed the move. But that's the baseball into the glove. It's almost like um, if you were bouncing a baseball this time right in a no-go. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. not a baseball, maybe a tennis ball. You're bouncing the tennis ball. And if you don't catch it, then, then it goes the wrong way. And so we put this out on the 7th because we're seeing no-go trend continuation icons uh, throughout the last few weeks. And we just got one on the 7th. And uh, prices continue to roll over and, and have moved lower. And so in the other direction, you see how on that lower panel, that zero line is acting as resistance. Um, what's also nice to note is that as all momentum analysis does, it leads the market. Trend identification lags, momentum leads. And so you see that break in the zero line to the downside before the trend rolls over to a no-go. So that can give you some more aggressive money management um, options if you're looking to preserve capital. The trend is in place. We know that that zero line should be support. It isn't. Okay, we move out. Then we see the no-go, and now we're seeing those no-go trend continuation icons. So just a, a recent example of using it in the other direction. Fantastic, Alex. Thank you so much. So the trend is a no-go. We've moved from $44 to $37 already this week. We're at a negative four on the oscillator, and we've uh, we found resistance at the zero line, right? Yep. We, uh, we continue to stay negative. So let's go back to our relative strength work and look at uh, these same ratios, but using the complete suite of tools for go-no-go no go charts. Uh, right now, we're looking at a ratio of the communication sector to the utilities, Right, and that uh, that defensive play uh, uh, starting at the beginning of this year in 2022, uh, communications relative to utilities, right? Growth uh, relative to defensive, uh, just rolling over as utilities outperformed. Yeah. What, what strikes you on this chart here, Alex? Well, you know what's interesting here is is you 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 need to um, the trend is great to give you that sense of trend, but the other pieces, as we've uh, hopefully we've tried to show, can help you manage the lifetime of that trade. Right. So when we saw those squeezes build up there uh, in the middle of this chart while in a go trend, we expect all else being equal, the the um, the oscillator to break out of the squeeze to the upside. It does the first time. It doesn't the second time. So that is a threat to that go trend. And then we see it roll over into the no go. What we'd be looking at now is that 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 rotation has been swift. And actually, mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of oversold um conditions. We haven't even got back to the zero line yet. So the no-go is very, very strong, meaning that a no-go on the ratio, communications underperforming utilities on a weekly basis. So we'll look to see what happens as the oscillator approaches zero, uh, but that no-go trend in place. Absolutely. So we're in a weak no-go right now. The oscillator is at negative one. Obviously, we took the stairs on the way up and the guillotine on the way down uh, in terms of this relative ratio. We're approaching the zero line where we will look to see if it meets with resistance, rejected back to the zero line. And that's where we would see that trend continuation icon, the, yeah. uh, the red circle for the no-go. So within the communication sector, right, we know this is a really weak area of the market, underperforming uh, the benchmark, also underperforming defensive sectors. We might look to an individual security for the short play. Alex, yeah. talk to us about this chart of Netflix. Yeah, it's like you say, fish where the fishes are. Um, and so Netflix in the communication sector, everybody shouted out strong no-go, um, oscillator negative four, um, what's happening around the zero line? Well, actually it just broke back below the zero line. So it was, when it went into positive territory, we might've thought this was a basing pattern, but then we saw it cross quickly back below zero, no-go colors strengthened again to dark purple. Netflix is something that people have been selling uh, for months and you can see um, that it really, even after these massive gaps down, there was more pain to come. So you want to stay with that trend and not try to catch a falling knife or try to buy that bounce. 
absolutely. Uh, and that's Netflix. And then I think if we... At, and I think this really speaks to the idea that we do not forecast, right? We, we don't want to own a no-go. We don't want to speculate or bottom fish that, oh, well, it's, it's oversold. The valuation is looking so much better. We should buy into it here at these lower levels. It's a no-go trend. The, the evidence is to the downside. It's guilty until proven innocent. And yeah. so if we were to buy in here ahead of these gaps, that's really irresponsible trading. If we're trading to the short side, right, we might add to our short position, maybe cover shorts at uh, at some of these counter trend corrections and then lean into them where we see momentum resurge in the direction of the trend. A yeah. uh, couple quick notes there on uh, the short side. Alex, let's talk a little bit about the energy sector to the benchmark S&P 500 here as we come to the end of today's presentation. Yeah, so I think this is the last uh, example we've got, but we're talking about the trade of the year. And you can see here the go trend uh, in the ratio really kicking into gear at the beginning of the year. And just look at how well supported the oscillator has been by the zero line throughout this trend. So this is a weekly chart. You've continued to get go trend continuation icons, oscillator finding support at zero. So uh, I'm peering in here. Put your hands up. What is the trend? The trend looks to me like it's an aqua go, so slightly weaker. And the oscillator is at about three. Yes, got it right. And um, no, there's nothing really at the moment happening around the zero line. If it gets to the zero, we'll look to see if it finds support. Um, and if it does, we'll expect it to find uh, to continue in that direction. Um, one, one quick shout out, Alex, I wanted to make uh, my, my co-host on the CMT podcast, Fill the Gap, Dave Lundgren and I got to interview Frank Teixeira. One of the points he made was that TA is so powerful for risk management, we often overlook how powerful it is for alpha capture, right, yeah. to the upside. Yeah. So when we talk about trend following, we need those outsized gains to help mm -hmm. us with those small losses that we're very happy to take. So when you think about uh, sticking with a trend, being a patient investor, Having the complete suite of tools, right? We know we're in a, a go trend, but every time we retest the zero line and break back up into positive momentum, it's a time to pyramid into that position, add to the position, scale up. Uh, I was listening to an interview with Stanley Druckenmiller last night from the Sohn conference, and he said, I need to know when I'm hot. If I'm up 40% for the year, a lot of fund managers just take a break and, and uh, relax for the rest of the year. He said, not me. You've got to make hay while the sun is shining. You press your bets. And when you're hot, you size up your positions. He said, as the trigger puller for Duquesne Capital, his job is to size up traders who are really uh, capturing those trends. Yeah. You can do the same with go-no-go -no -go charts. Yeah. Alex, last example here, Valero Energy Corporation, yeah. individual name within the energy sector. We've got uh, a, a weak go trend. We've got the oscillator at zero, important inflection point. And then, of course, uh, we want to see that uh, rally again for this trend to continue in Valero. That, my friends, brings us to the conclusion of today's presentation. Make sure you're tuning in every Thursday at 3.30 Eastern here on Stock Charts TV for the weekly Go No Go show. You can check out the plug-in to ACP, the complete Go No Go solution. Use these charts yourself. Uh, and certainly subscribe to our research at gonogocharts.com. Alex, it's always been a pleasure to work with you. What fun. Uh, and any, any final words for our guests here today? See you all tomorrow. <laughs> Very well. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.